Our next guest is here to weigh in on the recent blockbuster legal settlement by the National Association of Realtors. If approved by a federal court, that deal would eliminate the industry standard 6% sales commission and put money back in the pockets of home sellers. Joining us right now is real estate broker Ryan Surhant. He is the CEO of Surhant. And Ryan, let's just talk about that. I am so confused by everything I've read around this, what this <laughs> means, what, how things are coming. I guess you've probably spent a lot more time trying to analyze it. What, what do you think happened here? It can be very confusing. Uh, the lawsuit alleged that the National Association of Realtors, real estate brokerages, and local MLSs conspired to obligate a seller to pay a buyer's agent's commission. And what the settlement does is it really acknowledges that the traditional brokerage model has to change. And I think, listen, I think we all agree that there should be a free market conversation around compensation. And so what will happen starting this summer, nothing changes for right now um, around the country, but what will happen starting this summer is that buyers and buyers agents, if they elect to use one, and sellers and sellers agents, should they elect to use one? Because it's, you're not obligated to use a real estate agent in the United States, and you're not obligated to pay 6%, 10%, or 1%. Right? Those fees are what the market has commanded for decades. It's, it's kind of standard, and it's standard because people don't buy homes every day. So by the time you figure out what's happening, you get to the other side of this. Look, I, I think there are times when I've absolutely mm -hmm. needed a broker, other times where I have not. Sure. And it's not easy to figure out or to negotiate on the ends. If everybody thinks that this is the way it should be done, why did it take a lawsuit to get us there? Oh, I, I am all for market transparency. And what frustrates me the most, just kind of to what you're saying right now, is that the old guard in this business has spent so much time, so much money, you know, on lawsuits just like this, defending where they've been instead of trying to build to where we're going. I think what happens now is, is new business models. I think there's new opportunity. What do those models look like? What happens? I think there's going to be greater versatility in how you work with your agents. And what's interesting for me is if you look at over the past 10 years, regardless of this lawsuit, all of the new technology, artificial intelligence, websites, iBuying, Zillow, et cetera, humans buying and selling homes have actually elected to use realtors more because it's so complicated. You don't know where to start. Well, I have to say part of it is a tight market. If you're in a tight market right sure. now trying to find a house, by the time it's on Zillow, it's gone. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I think that you absolutely need a broker in a tight market where houses are moving quickly. You need a broker if you are moving to an area that you're unfamiliar with. Mm -hmm. You need a broker if you're a first-time home buyer and you don't know the risks that are associated. You don't know your rights. You don't know what you can and can't ask for along those lines. Correct. And what you'll have now is greater transparency, which I am a massive, massive proponent for. It's one of the reasons I started my own company. I looked around at what my competition was and a place that I could go as a realtor myself, and I couldn't find the transparency that I wanted. And I think real estate agents are paid in a correlation with their value that they provide to their customer. And that's what you'll see more of going forward. If a buyer wants to use a buyer's agent, there is going to be greater transparency. But meaning what the buyer says to the agent, okay, I'd, I'll take you on as my agent, you can show me places, but mm -hmm. I'm only going to pay you X percent or I'll pay you a flat fee. Or you know, if you get me a house in this amount of time, you can get this percent versus you know, if you, if you don't meet any of these things, then I'm not going to pay that same level. Yeah, I think it, it remains to be seen how this is going to shape out in the open marketplace, right? Yeah. These new rules aren't going to go into effect until sometime, at least over the summer. I mean, my only hesitation with any of this is I could have done that before. Sure. If I was aggressive enough with a broker and of said, course. here's what I'm willing to pay. Yep. And here's how this is going to work. Absolutely. There, there is no obligation to use a real estate agent in the United States. There's no obligation yeah, I, I to pay a higher fee. I've bought places with them without them. Of course. Right. Of course. Now, in New York City, everything's a bit different because there is no, we're not members of the National Association of Realtors in New York City, and there is no MLS in New York City. I don't so there get are no the sense that it's better in New York City. Well, New York City is, that. remember too that using a great salesperson, great service is expensive bad service costs you a fortune. And so we see that time and time again. Discount brokerages have existed for a long time. You could sell your own home by yourself. Somebody just listed their own home in Soho for $35 million as a for sale by owner. They could use an agent. Maybe they'll sell, maybe they won't sell. But I think greater transparency is important to bring our industry forward, and I'm for it.
God, I'm thrown back to my brokerage days. Would 1,000 shares be good or would 2,000 be better for you? I understand how you feel. Many of my clients have felt that way in the past, but they found you got it all down, uh, and you do. Is this a, like a Dale Carnegie type, type thing? No. no. Huh? I, I, well, tell me again about so great service. Bad service actually costs you in the long run, so you should pay more fees up front. To, is, is that what you said? Is no, that, no. I think that anytime you're electing to use someone to help you, whether it's an attorney, a real estate agent, a, a it landscaper. Cost more. It should cost more. I think great service can cost more. I think bad service will cost you more in the long in run. In the long run. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Right? If you make a mistake or if, like you were saying, if you buy a home in a new market that you're unfamiliar with and you buy in an area that, oh, shoot, I, I shouldn't have bought there. I didn't have great advice. Right? I didn't have great service. You know, but I think greater transparency in the market going forward is exactly what the market's called for. And like I said earlier, I think everyone is on the same page that compensation should be a free market conversation. And that's what you're going to have.